Today we're going to take a look at this new Craftsman RP High Torque Half Inch Drive Impact Wrench. This seems to have all the things on it that I've ever asked for. A sliding switch on the bottom to go between mode 1, 2, and 3. Nothing special down there at all. Just three different modes. Fairly basic tool. Not much other than forward reverse and the settings. I love that. Now we're gonna remove these tires, rotate them. I also gotta fix a bumper that had a little oopsie back here. We're gonna see how this thing does and just give her hell. We haven't dove real deep into this yet. I've just removed one wheel, but while I did, I noticed that this tool seems to hold some of the RPM coming off. Like there's no real break on the inside. Not that there should be, but check this out. It doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal. Uh, this is a 2000 RPM machine. And I just compare it to the DCF 900. If you take a look at the two, they're fairly similar sized. There's a big difference in weight, there's no doubt. DeWalt, 2300 RPMs. Let's take a look. You can hear the difference. So we have a much faster speed. Let's just hit these two and see which one stops first both the same. So what that tells me is that the DeWalt really stops faster because it's spinning faster and the Craftsman seems to be a little bit slower when it stops. So the lug nuts seem to spin a little bit more than what I'm used to when they're coming off on a normal car. All right, we're on level three. We're gonna play with the trigger on this. So as soon as it's done impacting, I'm off the trigger. And it's still, that one was two turns from removing it. Kind of feel like I'm back in the old pneumatic days a little bit. It spins a little bit more than what I'm used to, but it's not bad. Just for fun, let's drop down to level two. Let's just see how that does removing this. I didn't expect that. Interesting. Guess that's not gonna do it. All right, we are on level one. We're just gonna take these in, see what level one does. Since level two did not remove the lugs, it makes me wonder. These should be 150 foot pounds, which is more than I expected, but that's what they're set at. So we're gonna go in and just slowly tighten these up on level one. That was full throttle there. So level one and this is really slow. It's kind of like hand tight. That surprises me. I just want to get a wrench on this and just feel with my hand. I mean, that's, you know, 10 foot pounds. There's nothing there, nothing. So level one does not do a whole lot, which very interesting. Let's go to level two. It's interesting also because watching the socket, it didn't move much. Wow. Not an ideal way to do a torque, but for the camera. Not horrible. Actually for that, quite perfect. 
So probably 130, 120, it took it in, maybe just guessing. Uh, it's a round number, but that's not bad because that's where you'd kind of want this. All right, level one's cool, not needed. Let's just use the variable speed trigger in level two. Not bad, but what I do notice is that we still have a lot of spinning happening after I let off the trigger, even when I'm impacting. Not that it's a huge deal, it's just something to get used to. There we go. 250. This thing is rated for 1,000. We should have zero issue with this guy, none. But I want you to listen to how long it takes for it to Pound its way off. We're running a five amp hour battery, it comes with a four, and with that, the impacts are probably gonna be significant. Maybe not. Nope, it took her right off. Just put it back on. Let's just see. There's 250. It's not much more than 250 going on. Now with that said, I mean, I'm putting a good amount to move it. So we're getting there. All right, let's go through this. Let's just tighten this guy up. We are at 400 foot pounds right there. We added a little bit to it before. There we are, 400 foot pounds. Will this guy remove it? Yes, and it actually didn't struggle that much. I'm surprised because it doesn't feel like it has that much power when you're using it, especially on level two when it wouldn't take off a 150 foot pound bug nut. All right, that is everything this guy has. Let's see if we got back to 400 foot pounds. I'm gonna say no, but we are close. I'm just gonna go to 415 and that we moved it. So very, very close to 400 foot pounds tightening on that particular bolt. They're all gonna vary. So it does have a little bit of ass behind it, but it doesn't feel like it. If someone tells you the DeWalt DCF 900 is the same as the Craftsman 940, I'm saying no. Uh, there's a weight difference, there's a, a RPM difference, there's a lot of things that are different while using them. And I'm not saying they should be, they're definitely not the same ratings, they're not the same price, lots of things like that. This DCF 900, pretty freaking awesome. Probably the most powerful impact in the half inch drive that's out there right now, and that thing hits hard. This guy doesn't hit as hard, but it definitely works. In, I guess maybe in my head, I'm thinking, you know, it won't take a lug nut off that's at 150-ish on level two, which really surprised me with that. And then maybe what's level three gonna be when it doesn't feel like it's hitting that hard. So it is very comfortable to use and it probably will surprise you with the amount of power that it has. So if you're in Michigan and you're working on some rusty suspension or anything like that, this shouldn't disappoint. If you're gonna get over the 650, 700 mark, I don't know that it's actually gonna be reliable in that area. And I think that's going to be just about any tool that's rated for a thousand foot pounds nut busting. That's gonna be 
clean stuff, right? That they're testing it at in clean, dirty, whatever, however it's gonna be. That's just my opinion. No one else's, no scientific fact behind that. You know, if you're in the 600 foot pound range, this should easily pull it out without issue. Be above that, you're gonna get into the 50-50 point. However that goes, again, my opinion. Let me know what you think of that comment because I, I know a lot of people are gonna be like, oh, I've seen this guy, that guy, this guy. Real world stuff, that's my opinion from you using this stuff. I love how the switch works on the bottom. I don't see that as wearing out. I like that switch better than I do the DeWalt DCF900. I'm not into push buttons, although I like the modes that the DCF900 has. I like the light better. I like this slide switch. Ain't shit gonna happen to it, and that's just how it's gonna be. It's gonna work, and unless you fill it with crud, dust, and sand, it's still just gonna slide back and forth and be happy and not wear out in most cases. Other than that, pretty decent unit. Something that you could pick up and use consistently. You could easily rotate tires with this. It is heavier, but not too heavy. It's not like some of the other ones, not like this DeWalt. This DeWalt is very heavy. So the lighter weight of this allows you to probably use it in more places, maybe use this as your main impact. I know back in the day, I just had one and I was thrilled to have one. So if you just wanted to have one and you didn't want to get a mid torque because you were going to do a little more suspension work, this would definitely do it and you wouldn't have issues using it. If you have any questions, leave them below. Give us a like on this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you for your time. Have a great day.